All right, guys, welcome back to Mr. Gruber's YouTube page. Today we're going to be talking about the parametrization of lines in space. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get started and get right into it. So this first example says find the equation of the line in slope-intercept form and standard form passing through the point. So if you need a little refresher on what standard and slope-intercept form are, here's standard form. Sometimes you'll see the C written on the other side, side equal to zero, everything equal to zero. Um, other times you'll see the C, which is just a constant, as well as A and B. Um, written in this format, and then you have slope-intercept form where y equals mx plus b, m is your slope, b is your y-intercept. So the goal for today is we're familiar with how to do these types of problems, and we're going to review one with this example one, but is there any other way that we can uh, define the equation of a line, and we're going to use vectors this, in this case, um, so that we can kind of apply it to even things that are in, say, for example, three-dimensional space, which is what we're going to get into by the end of the video. So let's get started with this review problem. So first thing I'm going to do is find my slope. So remember to find slope, you take your first points. It doesn't matter the order that you choose. And call one of them x1, y1, the other one x2, y2. And then you do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So in this case, you get 2 over 2, which is 1, right? So it's a pretty simple slope. In this case, we just get 1. And then actually, this is my y-intercept. So in all, my equation says y equals 1x, or just x, plus b, which is 5 in this case. So there's my slope-intercept form, right? And then to put it into standard form, actually, all I have to do is move the x's and the y's onto the same side and get any numbers that are by themselves, any constants away from them. So in this case, I would subtract y to this side, subtract 5 to this side. I have the variables on one side equal to a constant, and that's the standard form. Now you may be wondering, why is this a minus and the equation has a plus? Well, remember the minus we can always write as plus negative y, and then we have this form here, right? So this is my, uh, my standard form. So we'll say this is slope intercept or int and this is standard right so now how can i use vectors to kind of still define a line but again using vectors and uh, defining it in a different way right and actually this is going to be more convenient as you'll see once we get to three dimensions so let's look at the same example here um, and if you look up here i have a nice diagram that kind of shows an idea for you know what's going on here visually um, and actually, just to make it a little bit clearer, let me go ahead and try and see if I can change these points real quick. Okay, so we have the points changed now, just so it matches the picture a little bit nicer here. Um, so for this diagram, if you look at it, I could go through and find the y equals mx plus b, or the standard form that represents this line, but in this case, I'm actually going to use vectors. And again, we'll see the use of that in the next example. So if I have a point at negative 2, 3, and I draw a vector to it, I have a point at 3, 6, which is up here. And I could draw a vector from the origin of there. In this diagram, they don't actually have that, but you could do that. Um, what I can do is I can use the relationship of how I know vectors work and kind of in tandem with this idea of a, a slope and a y-intercept to find a different form of an equation using vectors. So what I want you to do is think about how when you're used to graphing, you know, something like this, where you have a y-intercept of 5, a slope of 1 over 1, so the line, just a very quick sketch, would look like this, right? This y-intercept here is kind of like your anchor point, right? It, it, it's where you start the line from, basically. Um, now, the line goes on in both directions, but when we graph it by hand, that's usually where we start, right? And then I go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, using the slope. So I'm going to use the same idea here, and I'm going to use uh, this negative 2, 3 sort of as like my anchor point. So it's almost like a y-intercept, right? So you can think of this as a y-intercept. Uh, it's not a y-intercept, but you can think of it as that. So my setup here is I'm going to call this uh, the vector s. Okay, So we have our vector notation with the arrow on top. And then I'm going to say that is equal to negative 2, 3 plus t. Okay, and then here's where it really gets different, but it's also very similar to this idea of how I calculated the slope, right? Subtracting the y values from each other and the x values. Uh, so I'm going to go back to here, and then for next to t, I'm going to take the x values of negative 2 and 3 and subtract them. 
So 3 minus negative 2, watch your double negatives. And the y value is 6 minus 3. So this is equal to negative 2 comma 3 plus t, 5 comma 3. Right? So there's a lot that's kind of going on here that we need to unpack. unpack. So first of all, what is this t? Well, remember that when you're talking about parameterization, t is your parameter, right? So it's kind of like... Uh, you are, you're defining X's and Y's, um, but you're using sort of this third variable T uh, to maybe get around some of the difficulties of graphing just in terms of X and Y. So I'd encourage you, if you don't remember, go back and look at like eliminating the parameter. Um, that's a really good topic to look at and see, you know, how does this T relate to the X and Y's? Um, but that's not the focus of this video. So the video here, we have this kind of anchor point of negative two, three, and then plus t times 5 thirds. So this is like our, um, our setup that we had in the first problem in the sense that, yeah, here I have obviously different forms. I had slope intercept form and I had standard form. I had a slope of 1, a y intercept of 5. And obviously the numbers are different for this problem. But if you look, what I've done is I've taken um, this line here, which my goal was still to define that line. I'm just doing it with vectors now. And say, for example, you plug in t as 0. Well, what do you get? you get negative two, three. Well, that's a point on the line. What if I plug in T is one? Okay, then I'd have negative two plus one times five is three, and three plus one times three is six. That's the other point on the line, and you only need two points to define a straight line, right? So this does define this line here. It's just that I've used vectors now to define it instead of slope intercept and standard form. Okay, so you also might be wondering, okay, well, why did you do 3 minus negative 2 and 6 minus 3. Well, if you look at the picture here, I wanted the direction of the vector to go this way. So this was kind of like my second point, right? You can think of it as like x2, y2, x1, y1, right? In, in relation to what we did on this first problem here, okay? Um, and also, no one is to say that I have to use negative 2, 3 as my anchor point, right? I could have used a different anchor point. So that's the crazy and genius thing of parametrization is... There's an infinite number of ways that you could parametrize a line. This is one of them that I chose just to kind of match this, uh, this picture here nicely. Okay, So why is this useful? Why would I want three different ways to write an equation of a line? Slope intercept form, standard form, and uh, this parametrization form. Well, let's say that I have something in three dimensions now. Say something like this. So this says find the parametrization of the line through the points 0, 5, 1, 2, 7, 3. So first of all, I have an x, y, and a z value. So I'm in three dimensions. I tried to find a nice picture here. I actually used uh, a website to go ahead and show this visual here. So you can see you have three dimensions. So you have this line going through a 3D space. Think about like a, a string or something in our world, just like hanging maybe off of a, a ceiling or something. So we have this line in three dimensions. Now, the nice thing is, is that I have this idea of parametrizing, parametrizing a line um, in 2D space, and I can actually just apply it to three-dimensional space, and actually you can use it for n dimensions, however many dimensions that you want, which is pretty useful um, and convenient. Okay, so I'm not going to get into the way other ways that you could uh, define a line in 3D space. They're a little bit more technical and not really difficult, but just different ways, you know, kind of thinking about how we did the slope intercept form and standard form versus the parametrization form. Um, but I have this nice setup here for defining a line with parameter, a parameter T. And what I'm saying is that we can apply that to any dimension. So like if I wanted to do this one, right, um, let's make this my anchor point, okay, which is in relation to like the y-intercept when we did a straight line in two dimensions. Um, so my setup, let's call it w this time. So the vector w, which is going to represent this line, or it's going to be the equation of this line, is going to be equal to 0, 5, 1 plus t. And now I'm going to use the same idea as what I did in this problem, but not only am I going to have to be subtracting x's and y's, but I'm also going to be subtracting z's, okay? And we're going to assume that this is our first point, and I want to go towards this point. So I'm going to do these numbers minus these ones, okay? So I'm going to have the x's 
2 minus 0, comma, the y's, 7 minus 5, comma, the z's, 3 minus 1. So in all, I get 0, comma, 5, comma, 1. Again, notice I'm using that vector notation, plus t. And then in the vector, 2, 2, 2. So they all just happen to be 2's there. So this would be the parametrization of this line in three-dimensional space. And I've used vectors to do it. And again, t is known as my parameter. So again, we could check it. Let's say, let's let t equal 0. All of this goes away, and I get 0, 5, 1, right, using vector addition. And then let's say t is 1. Well, then I have 0 plus 2. All of this stays the same, right? 1 times 2 times 2 times 2. All these stay 2s. And then using vector addition, 0 plus 2 is 2. 5 plus 2 is 7. 1 plus 2 is 3. That's exactly the second point. So yes, this does... Uh, represent the equation or one parametrization of the line passing through these three points, or excuse me, these, these two points in three-dimensional space. Okay, so again, you can use this for any dimension, which is pretty useful and convenient. Okay, so I'd, I'd encourage you to, you know, try and make the connections between, again, that uh, the slope-intercept form, the standard form, and now the parametrization of a line and see how this, this parametrization can really be useful in any uh, sort of dimension, specifically three dimensions, which is easier for us to visualize, um, and how we can use that to find the equations of different shapes, even past lines. You can even look at other shapes in 3D, which get even more advanced. So it's pretty cool, um, and I hope this helped. Thanks for watching, guys.